Anyway, thank you. Uh, I'm Christine Payne. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about work I did this summer in the OpenAI Scholars Program. Um, I was looking at doing music generation using a neural net. So I thought I'd start out by um, playing a couple of the generations that I got. One was when I trained a net on classical music. And then the second one is uh, the same neural net, but instead trained on uh, jazz music. So things I've played piano since I was four, and I don't think I could do that. The matrices beat me. So. Um, but the idea of this is that um, there's been a lot of progress in uh, in language modeling um, recently. Um, get this going again. Uh, we have um, two kind of main architectures that get used right now are LSTMs and transformers. I don't have time to go into them, but feel free to catch me afterwards. And I can talk about this. Um, so the idea is that you take um, a neural network and you train it on a bunch, uh, so for language you train it on a bunch of um, sentence fragments, so something like this, you, you feed in the first set of words and then you ask the model to predict the last word. Um, and you just give the model tons and tons of this sort of training data. Uh, once you have a model that's really good at this problem, you can then turn it around and turn it into a generator. Um, as it spits out that last word, you can feed that word back in um, and then it can continue predicting more and more. That way you can make it arbitrarily long. So a problem I had along with this was, uh, can we then take music and translate it into a sequence of tokens that we can feed into model, pretty much use the same architecture that already is doing really well on language problems. The problem is music tends to be pretty complicated. Um, it doesn't kind of come at you sequentially the way you'd want. Um, so I'm defining here what I call a musical time step which is all, you know, everything that's happening at one moment in time. So what I might want to tell the model is, okay, here you have to play D and B, and then you move to the next time step, you play G, next time step, so forth, next time step, G and a C. The problem you can see here is now all of a sudden there's a note um, here in the middle that's faster than I was sampling the music. So I need to go back, I need to think about... Um, should I have a faster assembling frequency? Though that then means I might have a lot of moments where nothing's happening at all. Um, some other problems I run into are, um, do I want to model like the entire 88 notes on a piano? Do I want a small range? Um, do I want to allow, here there are sometimes multiple notes per time step. Sometimes you might want to just do like a four part harmony where you know there are always four notes at a time. So to solve this, I'm proposing two different kinds of encodings. Um, one I'm calling a chord-wise encoding, and then the other a note-wise one. So I think of the chord-wise one as more, for a language model, like a, a word um, prediction task. So here I'm, for that very first note, literally listing out, you're not playing any notes except for one C and then this other C. And so each of my tokens is any combination of notes that happen at one time. Um, so across classical music, you end up with something like uh, 55,000 tokens. Um, the trouble I ran into with this is uh, the model handled this really well, except that it, was, it got really good at memorizing things. So I accidentally memorized like all of classical music, which was <laughs> kind of cool, but not helpful for generating new pieces. Um, so then I switched over to the note-wise system, where um, this is a little bit more like modeling character by character if you're doing um, a language modeling thing. So here I'm listing, like you play a C and a C an octave above it. The 22 and 34 have to do with a MIDI. I was using MIDI um, notes for that. Um, then you have to give it a sign to let it know, now you're done with that time step, wait for the next one, um, end a certain note, play another note, wait again. So that one turned out to be a lot more flexible. It had a smaller vocab size. Um, I was able to generalize it to other instruments. Um, was it? And it did a lot better moving from our training validation set. 
So along with that, I, uh, I created an internet quiz, as everyone does, for um, judging whether my pieces were human composed or AI composed. And here, this is totally unscientific, but fun. Um, people were asked to judge um, what they thought, who had composed the piece. And out of four questions, it pretty much was just like people were guessing from random. There were, you know, a few, uh, especially friends who were musicians, were able to get them four for four, but a lot of people had trouble with it. So, um, And pretty much wrapping up, um, my thought is that uh, these better encodings um, really do lead to better music generation when you're dealing with neural nets. Um, what I'm looking at in the future is trying to come up with more creative encodings. Um, right now I'm working on uh, like branching out past classical music, um, encoding lots of different instruments, um, also looking for longer time scale things. This is a big problem in language modeling as well, like trying to get to be able to um, generate an entire page rather than just a sentence that makes sense. Um, and then some fun ideas. I thought it'd be neat to train a model, say, on like two different genres and then try blending them together. Like, I don't know, I thought mixing Chopin and jazz, but more recently I have a data set that has like Backstreet Boys and all sorts of things. So I figure we'll see where it goes. Um, um, and in general, I'm interested in this idea of how do you combine some sort of like fuzzy sense of what's happened in the past. Um, and you maybe only need to know the precise details of the last like the, the last few seconds, um, but you still want a big picture view, and then you want to be predicting a big picture view, but then only need the details in the next few seconds. So kind of combining that um, different hierarchy. So I just wanted to say a quick thanks to my mentor over the summer, um, Karthik. Uh, and if anyone's curious about the OpenAI Scholars Program, please come talk to me. I think it's a really fantastic project uh, or program. I've actually ended up staying on there and working there now. Um, and then thanks to Classical Archives and BitMIDI for giving me a ridiculous number of MIDI files to do this. So, <laughs> thank you.